Howdy y'all, Jackson here with Dick Drake Studios, and welcome back to another episode of Just Some Rambling. Today's going to be probably, maybe a little bit longer, uh, since I actually have some topics to talk about, but when, then again, uh, I don't really have much to say about the games this week. But first off, just a quick channel schedule update, um, on days of the week when the videos are coming out, I'm switching around to maybe more align with what the content actually is. Mondays, obviously, will still be this, um, Wednesdays now are actually going to be my, uh, uh, fantasy league for the World Virtual League of Great Football, so it'll be the championship, and then we're going to go on a little bit of break in between seasons, but, uh, obviously, the, the videos will be on Wednesdays from now on, uh, and I'm going to start move the historic college football playoffs to, uh, Saturdays, because, you know, Saturday is college football day. All right, on to the games. First up, we have the college game, uh, Michigan at Maryland. Uh, it was an easy win for Michigan, 38-7, uh, uh Luckily, they didn't overlook their opponents, uh, which was a worry I had them, maybe them looking ahead to Michigan State. Um, but the game was pretty much always in hand. Uh, in fact, the game started with a kick return touchdown, so they pretty much could just cruise the entire game. Um, so now they head into a bye week uh, before going up against Michigan State. Uh, I am confident, but always a little bit hesitant for a rivalry game because pretty much anything can happen in those. Um, you can just ask, uh, your Appalachian State fans this week, uh, cause they just got blown out by a, uh, uh, Georgia Southern. Now I'll head over to the professional world, uh, for the Bears at the, uh, Eagles. It was, uh, Eagles 22, Bears 14. Uh, the game was not as close as that score dictates. Uh, I'm going to be honest, though, uh, for the game itself, I kind of only skimmed and watched it barely over the whole uh, game, because I pretty much expected to lose and was not surprised by the result. Uh, the Bears' offense is, for the most part, a complete joke. Actually, not a most part, entirely a complete joke. Uh, for the first half, I believe they're averaging, like, 0.1 yard per passing attempt, which is hilariously bad. I said that, in fact, might be worse than uh, zero yards per passing attempt, because that means you at least completed passes, but uh, that didn't go anywhere. Well... Or you're getting sacked, which is a thing that was happening in the first game, first half. Um, the defense still looks fairly solid, which is a good thing, but uh, you're beginning to see a little bit of cracks and wear, probably because they have no confidence in the team to win games because they have no offense. Uh, next week, the Bears are home against the Lions. Uh, not confident about this. Uh, Lions have actually been competitive in their losses, uh, so I pretty much go into this expecting to lose. We can now head back to the college world, uh, to where the NCAA actually did a good thing this week. Uh, they had a unanimous decision to allow players to, uh, uh, or to look into, or not look, but to approve, and then soon implement the ability for athletes to make money off their likenesses and stuff, basically through endorsements and things. Uh, it's obviously not immediate, because, of course, it wouldn't be. Uh, I'm assuming it's probably gonna, like, take, like, five to ten years to fully implement because bureaucracy is slow and they don't probably don't really want to do it but this is the one good thing that california actually led to by uh pass signing that bill for uh 2020 so maybe that will streamline it but i don't think the ncaa is going to be that fast with it uh for the rest of the country but you know hopefully that will allow you know the california schools not to get a uh, boxed out from both because they're implementing it because you don't want you know those fan bases to get screwed over um so anyway great decision and it's just how i wanted it uh via endorsements and not uh schools paying out uh, i think this helps in the long run in a uh, different sport uh, i can lead to smaller schools getting like the second tier uh, level like guys that would be eventually borderline nfl talent so they think we'll go to uh, smaller schools in larger markets, so uh, this will probably be most evident in places like in basketball than I think more than football for, for that kind of thing, but eventually you're going to you're gonna get people choosing uh, the ability to make revenue now over uh, necessarily uh, facilities, because, you know, like, Tuscaloosa isn't as big as, say, Chicago, but, uh, but Tuscaloosa is going to have better facilities than Northwestern. Or whatnot. Most evidence, once again, in basketball, I think, uh, 
like DePaul will probably be able to, because they're in Chicago, uh, but their basketball program hasn't been good, but they play in a big conference, they're in a big city, they can probably get endorsements for a couple people, so that should help the recruiting. And that can, you know, maybe make a little bit more parity between the, the mid-majors and the majors, but maybe not based on uh, national brands and stuff, uh, sponsoring, you know, like the Alabamas of the world in football. But, you know, hopefully you can get a little bit out of it. Uh, I'm going to be honest, though, I still don't see a licensed video game in the future, even with EA saying, you know, they want to get back to it. I still think the cost of development will be too high to the payoff, especially considering, um, especially when taking effect uh, that the uh, groups are probably definitely unionized, and then you're going to have to go through uh, the association, you know, like the, the players' unions, and that will definitely depend on uh, how they unionize. If it's just a collective of collegiate athletes, they're probably super screwed at, at uh, getting a good deal. Um, if they do it individual conferences, you might be able to get something, but that's if you don't get holdout conferences because, you know, the SEC got this much money, but we're the Big Ten or whatever, and we want this much money. Yeah, so that's why I still don't see college fo a video game in the future, at least not in the foreseeable future, at least not fully licensed. Maybe you can get the Power 5 conferences. But I don't see you getting every single team like, like it was. The uh, last thing I want to talk about is a little bit of a somber news. Uh, the Arena Football League announced they were suspending local operations for all their teams. Um, it was pretty a shocking blow because uh, as far as I was paying attention to things, this was uh, unexpected. Um, they had a lawsuit come out with them a couple weeks ago, but they didn't make much of it until... Bam! All of a sudden, Leo, we're closing everything locally. Uh, the the it's really the old operators of the league screwing over the new operators because the lawsuits about unpaid insurance from uh, from when they re came back from uh, 2009 to 2012, I believe is the years that they're the unpaid insurance, which is just screwing over everything because they have like new operators since uh, 2018 or so, uh, which is you know. Uh, disappointing. 2019, in my opinion, was actually a really good season. Uh, they were up to six teams, I believe, now, because uh, they added uh, Columbus back and Atlantic City, along with the four teams they had ran with earlier. The Arena Bowl was back on ESPN, uh, so that regarnered some interest because some people didn't even know the Arena Football League was still running. Uh, the new commissioner has done a good job since he took over uh, in 2018. From all I was understanding, they were expecting planning to expand heading into 2020, but then lawsuit, and bam. Uh, from, from what the commissioner has been saying, that 2020 might still happen, though not in the traditional sense, more of a touring model. Uh, he keeps referring to what the Premier Lacrosse League did, which um, I wasn't familiar with until he brought it up, which is apparently they were just doing uh, like showcase games over the season in different cities. Obviously, still culminating with uh, records, well, specific teams and records and stuff. So there was still a league, not just you know. But you know, they had one location. They played all their games at that location for the week. Is what my what my understanding is. Um, there's also another interesting thing with the lawsuit that might be uh, a little problematic for uh, the other indoor leagues, is because uh, in the lawsuit, instead of listing like specific. Uh, people, they were listing teams, and there are some teams that were in the Arena Football League that are no longer in the Arena Football League and have moved to other leagues, uh, like like the Iowa Barnstormers, the Arizona Rattlers, and the uh, uh, Jacksonville Sharks. So, based on how this lawsuit is read and worked, this might be problematic for the Indoor Football League because they have the Rattlers and the Barnstormers as well as the uh, National Arena League, because that's where the Sharks have moved to. So if they're continue considered, uh, you know, continuous entities, they might get roped in the lawsuit, and that might just, you know, have this big old domino effect, which would be bad for the, uh, you know, the indoor game. Anyway, uh, thank you to listening me uh, just, just ramble thumb. Uh, if you liked the video, remember to like, uh, like it. Uh, if you have enjoyed my football content as a whole, 
Uh, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. Uh, thank you for watching. Bye.